about what President Biden did as a statesman to step away from power and to say, you know, hey, it's your baton now, run the race, and I'm gonna be here, you know, cheering you on from the cheap seats. I think that makes a really exciting move for him, and it just cements his legacy in history. It is a George Washington level move, and so, you know, I, I, my hat's off to him in that regards. But yeah, yeah, if he had had some of that energy, you know, I don't think it would necessarily have changed the equation because there needed to be a chapter change and a chapter turn anyway. Yeah. And this is one is just for Kwame. Obviously, you were on The Apprentice. Yes. And um, so you know Donald Trump. I do. A little better than most people here. Correct. Um, what do you kind of make of his, you know, what I suppose, what do you think he would have made of last night's debate? And what do you think is kind of going through his mind, um, you know, in terms of like the, the way that the mood seems to have shifted in the country since uh, Kamala um, yeah. The ticket. Yeah, I think uh, Vice President Harris's ascension has him shell shocked. And I think as you start to see the momentum and the energy build day over day in the DNC, and people are even talking about him, you know, monitoring the television ratings for different speeches, especially Vice President Harris's, and comparing him to his, the attendance factor of how many people came out, what people are talking about in social media. You know, he's a creature of the media. He wants to be loved, he wants to be approved, but he also wants to be loved and approved by the culture. So that celebrity influence, those endorsers, etc. So if you look at, you know, bringing Hulk Hogan to the RNC, a figure of the 80s, and someone from, from my generation versus, you know, bringing a Beyonce, who's, you know, the ambassador of modern culture, especially at the Gen Z level, is, it's a much different equation. And I think that really, that really affects him on an ego level, it affects him on a psychology level, and it actually puts him in kind of, into a little bit of a doom loop, so that he keeps you know, creating these negative, toxic, you know, quotes or statements or, you know, attacks on you know, Vice President Harris's race, those kinds of things, allowing people to stumble and you're watching your opponent fall, you know, you just kind of continue to like, let that machine do its own thing. And so I think right now he's in a bit of a doom loop until he can figure out a new base to, to, to start to build back his campaign from there. And we're running out of time for that. I and mean, we're at the less than 80 days mark. 